Good evening, everybody. Tonight is February 4th, 2020. Nati, Walter. Um, we are in Volume 3, Hazra'am Lachutit, Artificial Insemination, Vafriag Chutzkufit Balacha, and In Vitro Fertilization in Halacha. We began the subject last week. <coughs> um, in summary, the practical halacha was that a child born from artificial insemination is considered the son of one from which the sperm comes from in all respects. And most have felt that the, the father is Makaya Mitzvah Pruavu as well. Did, yes, uh, yes, I'm just summarizing. And now we're on page 93 of Hotza Zer Levatam. So, <clears throat> that whether you do artificial insemination or whether you do in vitro fertilization, you need to obtain the husband's sperm. And it's not deposited directly during the an act of intercourse into the vaginal canal. So that is always going to lead to the love of Hotza Zer Levatala. That is, emitting your seed without purpose. So, that's a halacha concern when you perform IVF. But it's what, purpose. Whether it's permitted to retrieve sperm from the male for the procedure. The halacha generally prohibits hotzah zer levatala, wasting seed, which is defined as ejaculation performed outside of the context of normal marital relations. And that's how the Shulchan Aruch rules in Evna Ezer, the says, this is the most severe transgression that one could commit of all the Averis in the Torah. You notice, he doesn't say murder. He doesn't say adultery. <coughs> he says, person shouldn't have relations with his wife, but, but come out prematurely, and then ejaculate outside. That's considered That is l'chura, what we understand was going on by Er Onan, the children of Yehud, the sons of Yehuda with Tamar. Rashi Dir says that he was, he was dashmi bifnim v'zorim because they did not want to ruin Tamar's beauty by having her go through a pregnancy. There were, in the Middle Ages, and throughout time, men that had two wives, one for beauty, one for children. And the one for beauty was did not get pregnant. And the one that had, you know, seven or eight, nine children was for children purposes. Maybe Jews did that as well. When they when remember Jews were permitted to have two wives. There's a form of contraception too. Two wives. They were able to have more than two wives. They were able to have more than two. A David Melech had six wives. <laughs> Yeah, Shlomo Melech had a thousand wives. What happened to the Jews? What happened Before 1500, before the Gezira, about having wives. Um, what did they do? Uh, who, we don't hear anything about anyone having more than one wife. They had more than one wife. Yes, you yes. do. And after Rabbeinu who, Gershom. Who was there? Who was there? Eli Marcianos grew up in a house where there were two wives. His grandfather had two wives. So the Svartim had it all the way, all the way through because mm -hmm. the Rabbeinu Gershon, the Isra Rabbeinu Gershon was only for the Ashkenazic world. Okay, so some poskim, such as the Divri Malkiel, the Rabbi Malkiel Tenenbaum, who lived in the late 1800s, where artificial insemination was already being done. So the halacha question came to him. He forbade artificial insemination based on this concern of Otsar Zerah Vatala. Gam Otsar Zerah Habal, L'tocha Shvoferet, Right, if the Baal is gonna put his seed into like a pipette, Yesh Lodun Shiei Osir, he says it should be prohibited. Abishas Maisa who motzi levatola. He's not interested in that. Later on, they're gonna, it means it's not levatola because what's the whole purpose of the, the the man ejaculating his seed? He intends to have it put into his wife through artificial means mm. through a pipette. So maybe you'll argue it's not levatola. Yeah. Says the Divrei Markel, we're not concerned. What's going to happen later? The habeshais ma'ase who motzi levatola. Right now, he's not doing. He's doing it levatola. 
V'rak shesoymech ala rofe shoymer sheyach nisenu l'rechemisha. He's relying on the doctor who's claiming, oh yes, I'm going to put it in to the uterus of the, of the woman. Heichan matzinu sheyachu lismoch b'zeh Where do we see that you could be soymech just because the doctor says? And he brings a raya from the Rajbah. Great cause of our Rajbah, v'od poskim, delahachi, ein mevarchim al mitzvah, hatluye ba'acherim. So for example, let's say there's a certain mitzvah where you need the participation of somebody else. You don't make a bracha for that mitzvah. Because, because, you don't always know for sure that the other side is going to fulfill their share of it. The Efshar Yachzer Bar Sheni, Velot Iskaba Mitzvah. But the he. But you don't make. Yeah, we don't make a bracha on it. But the he berchaso bracha levatola. The koshkin b'zeshi isra otzarich vazir levatola who isra chomer mal. And he adds on top of it. Oh, and not only that, but besides the fact that you can't rely on the doctor fulfilling his side. The act itself is an Isra Chomer. So the Dibri Malkiel prohibited artificial insemination. This is way before IVF. Yeah. Right. Way before IVF. Before was a, no, but artificial insemination they did. They did artificial insemination. Why you can't rely on the doctor? Okay, so many poskim, including Rav Moshe, held mm-hmm. that insemination or IVF is not considered Hotzaz Levertela because the ultimate goal of extracting the sperm is to use it for conceiving a child. They don't have this concern that you can't rely on the doctor. It's not the, So Rav Moshe was told that you know there's a medical procedure that with one time where they use a tube and they insert it directly into the uterus, this increases the success rate of fertility. <coughs> And he can, since he's married, so he has a wife, and he can have relations with her. So Rav Moshe says he can, he can start having relations with his wife the normal way and then come out and ejaculate into a, a condom or another mechanism. I was always taught in urology, halachic urology, that we use a they can use a condom, but you take a little pin and you make a hole in it. So technically, you have not used oh, contraception because it could technically come out through the hole. But in, usually, uh, most of the sperm will remain inside because you just use a pin. <coughs> and that's a, a one of the halachic uh, le- methods of obtaining the sperm in a halachic fashion. Even, for, for example, when you do a semen analysis, where a couple comes to you and they're infertile. And you have to evaluate the man's semen for motility. Does it move? Does it swim? What does it look like? Mm-hmm. So that's an aid that you can use as well instead of just putting it in a cup. Mm-hmm. The, most of the posts can hold that that's, this is what I've just described is a much better halachic way of retrieving sperm. So you would do the same, same way in this sense. Rav Moshe says, you're dash mi bifnim, the zore mi bachutz, the ha isr bezehu mitam otza zel vatalaki, the isr bevamas. All this are, is because you're going to waste the seed. Uvakan shu adarabba. Rav Moshe says it's just the opposite. Here, the whole purpose is to have a child. Kadesh atis abramizeh. Velohavi levatala umutter. So that's Rav Moshe. It's the, the godless of Rav Moshe who uh, matir this. And the Sefer Pua summarizes the different opinions and concludes that nowadays the majority of poskim allow the procedure. That is both artificial insemination and IVF, because you still have to obtain the semen from the from the husband for IVF. But it does not; they're not concerned with otzar zaro. Says the sefer pua. Yesh amim shosher lebal lahotzi zaro amenas lishtamish bol azros malachotit pishto. He's quoting the divrei malkiel. That's the yesh. That's the yesh oser. Machmas isra shchos zaro. Nimukehem. What was their thinking? Because isra otzar zaro who isra atzmi. This is an iser. We don't care what is it being used for. It's going to be used for this. It's going to be used for that. That's not what we're not. What nobody has said about that regarding the iser. Lachain lo moil doesn't help. We don't care that later on the doctor is going to use it. Right now he's being motzi the zera not in a normal way. Kimokain kaim chashash shemi zera ze lo tufra isha biyisbar lo mafresh or tzasos elavatol. He'll say something else. Sometimes they'll use the sperm and the woman won't get pregnant. Again, it's a hozar zelvatala. wasn't used to create a child. It's the same thing when you have a normal relation. Sometimes yeah. nothing happens. Okay, but, so. but there you haven't been over at Zelavatala. 
There, that's the norm. You're allowed to have relations. Here, yeah, you're yeah. not allowed to have what it says. So he wants to say, even if you're going to use the svara, that, oh, the whole point is to have a child, he wants to say, but if, the, if she doesn't become pregnant, maybe Lema Freya is considered what it says because it wasn't used for the child. No, Sach he says a third thing. Yesh chashash, the takalot shonot kagon irbuv zera abal and zera zar. Chelik mazer yatsa mechol mikro levatola. There were cases where doctors would mix the sperm of the father with other people's sperm. I'll tell you the reason. Couples were coming to the doctor because of infertility. So, okay, you evaluated the, the man <clears throat> and you found that he had normal sperm. And they, the thought was that the cervical mucus uh, is the cervical mucus is on the outside, so sometimes with normal ejaculation they won't swim. So with the artificial insemination, they take a tube, they put it directly in the uterus. Hang on, we're talking about when they use artificial insemination. So, in those cases, they would mix it with a, a man that they had from a sperm bank with normal fertility because they thought there was more chance that the artificial insemination will, will cause pregnancy. This is before DNA testing, before that, so then therefore the, the mother, she got pregnant, the child was born, it's assumed to be from the father. That, these were certain cases. And this is, so, now, today we have hashgacha. Because yeah, we're going to see, we, but, but that, uh, we're talking about in the 1950s and 1960s when there were no Allah, post can even knew of this subject matter. So, and let, let, it became apparent that Pete, there was mixture, and that's so he's saying, so since also there might be mixture, so his <laughs> sperm is not really being used, so he wants to say that why Poskim were concerned about Levatola. Achem, he says, however, Rova Poskim Svorm She'en Israash Chosa Zerbot Tzorasom Ha'abal L'Tzorech Hazrom Lachutit Bishto. That since the whole point, I don't think that's my house. Yes, it is. That bell? It's, it's the regular bell. You have two different bells, no? This, 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 so the post scheme hold that since the whole point of this is for is for priya v'revia, there is no hotzar zaratala. Nimukahem ain't the pula zumi shomash chazer zerim. It's neshak kavanahi letikun letzorach mitzvah. The whole point here is to correct the problem for mitzvah. Umevchina zu kivan shazer meshamish lafriya ta'isha. Since the zera is being used for fertility, and b'kach hotzar zaratala. Then, doing shmira, making sure that they use the husband's sperm, is going to prevent mix-up. We know for sure who the father is. So they, there's no reason to be concerned. That when the Divrei Malkiel and other poskim who assured, when they wrote their truvas, sikui hatslachashol tipule puriot, the success rate of these types of procedures hayakatan miod, we they, they used to work five percent of the time. It was very rare that they worked. V'loi tashlum efsherut shopikor chilchati, and there was no shmira kefisha katfu chelik ma poskim batzman because they said we have a problem with that. However, kayon im hitkadmut arufua. The increasing percentages of success rates. IVF success rates are close to 30-40%. Still not 100%. Each time you do a, an IVF procedure, not artificial insemination, artificial insemination is higher. But in, in vitro fertilization, which is much more complicated, you got to put it in the test tube, you got to grow, you got to put it. It's only successful 30 to 40% of the time. And now it's acceptable to have Shmira. So the, the, the psaks have changed. <clears throat> now, is there a difference between artificial insemination and in vitro fertilization? Do they have the same halachic status or they're both mutter and they're both the same? Most of what we've learned so far has been regarding artificial insemination. But IVF, where the fertilization itself takes place in the laboratory, does that have the same halachic status? Think about it. Artificial insemination is very simple. You take the sperm from the father and you put it through a, a pipette directly into the wow. u- uterus of the mother. And the it, so the only difference is the child occurs without intercourse. But otherwise, it's very direct. Remember, with in vitro fertilization, multiple steps. 
Got to take the egg from the woman through a, a, a needle from her ovary. So first, you got to get through ultrasound. You have to stimulate the ovary to give them hormones. They make many eggs. They go in. They go in with a, a, a needle and they extract an egg. You get the zera from the father. They put it together. There has to be a fertilization. Then, if there's fertilization, they take one egg. No, they take, take more than egg. Eggs. And they'll create multiple so embryos from that. In a test tube. In a test tube. And then they'll identify multiple embryos will develop. And they might have 10 to 12 embryos, which they'll freeze. And they might use two embryos at a time because the 30%, it's only 30% success rate. So that's why they used to put three in. The problem is if all three stuck, then the woman had triplets. So, so they're very careful with that. It's so, but, but by putting two in, Perhaps so. They're twins, or twins are more easily. It's not as risky, and and most likely it's one gets implanted, and then they have um, embryos frozen, so that if this cycle of IVF didn't work, Walter, they come back uh, two months later and they try it again, and they don't have to do the because it's complicated to draw the egg. So they give them hormones. Normally, the ovary ovulates one egg per cycle. But here they super ovulate them, so they're multiple eggs, in, and they'll see that on it's ultrasound. Not a health danger. It is there is slight health danger. There is slight health danger for the mother. So, so how do how do they what? No, but it's a small percentage, and for, for you know, yeah. it, it's not. It, it, there's a slight health, health, health a slight really increased risk, risk. What, what would, and there's certainly increased I'm risk. I'm not asking right. about the couples. Of course, the couples are willing to take the risk. I'm there asking, is a slightly increased I'm risk. Asking, I'm asking from the halacha wise. In other words, you're taking the you're taking the the mother, and you're putting her at risk. Slight, slightly increased risk. Yes. Yeah. So I'm just asking. Nobody ever talks about that. Yeah, they do. I mean, we whenever you when they you talk about elective death surgery. You brought deaths like that. No deaths. No deaths. I didn't say there's deaths. So I didn't say the deaths, but there's Ernie, potential what, complications. What they, the, they have to be injected with progesterone. They, you could get an increase of of, of blood clots. You know, like DVT, there's a slightly are there increase. endocrine diseases that arise from that. No, no, I don't think so. not no, endocrine no, diseases. No, no, no. So not what would determine? No, 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 it's not. No, it's not. But there's. But, there's, but they, if they're elevating the hormones, some people can, you know. But so for a short period of time, it's just mm -hmm. a short period of time. By the way, when you do an ultrasound and you and you have to put a needle into the ovary so the patient can bleed, you can have peritonitis. Any medical procedure we do to any patient carries risk. Carries some risk yeah. So the you know when someone goes for we dealt with remember cosmetic surgery and the yeah. and risks. So that that if, if it's accept if it's an acceptable risk today, it's considered acceptable. Jeremy, what would because, be because you you you're dealing with a, a mashu, you're dealing with a woman who has a potential thing, and you're dealing with something which is not a potential. In other words, yet yet. So you're taking a potential in halacha. If you get so it's a davar shelo ba lo olam. You mesaken in somebody who's ba olam, or a davar shelo ba lo olam for. That's all I'm asking. Okay, it's a, but the ferti all fertility is like that. Um, you don't do these procedures. You, yeah, you don't do these procedures mm -hmm. until a couple has gone right. through years yeah. and years and years yeah. of of, yeah. of fertility trial. Okay. And by the way, before you do IVF. You usually do a cycle of artificial insemination, IUI, or multiple ones before you do IVF. That's much cheaper, much less risky. You don't have to use hormones. You just, as I told you, just buy a pipette and you put it in. But that sometimes doesn't work. They'll always try that before so, IVF. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. What, uh, makes, what determines which method you use? So you will usually try artificial insemination first. Much cheaper, <laughs> much safer, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Okay, now you just answered. Yes. Now, how do you, don't you have to like push the the eggs or whatever the same as don't they have to be like no they're pla each, they're pla they're placed inside they don't have to be like pushed in or something no, like uh, they, they have to yeah. swim and all that kind of stuff no, no so, swimming you no. Have, they implant they it they, implant <coughs> they can implant it into the uterus yes okay so the, let's see the tzitz eliezer the tzitz eliezer tells us that IVF <laughs> is halachically much more problematic than IUI Rashid. We're talking about artificial insemination. It's very simple. Whether or not the woman is successful, she gets pregnant. 
So number one, he, the Tzitzel Ezra says, since everything is in the Rechem, it's not considered Hotzah Zer Levatola. It's not Hotza, it's, it's not, It hasn't been wasted outside. It's actually been placed where it's supposed to go. So even though, he, you see what the Tzitzel is saying? Even though temporarily it was outside, because it's in a, let's say the person ejaculated into a cup. That makes sense. But since it ended up in the uterus, there was no hotzah zel of atala. It's that's a that's a chidush. But it's only a small portion <clears throat> of the ejaculate that's injected. No, Most the, the whole yeah. The whole in artificial insemination, absolutely. Why? Why would you only do why part why of it? One half million there. One half million cells there. There are forty million sperm Sorry, in every milliliter. So if there's the average ejaculate is two to three milliliters, it's one hundred and fifty million sperm. Uh, how long can you keep it out? Twenty. So that also can be frozen and defrosted. But usually you want to do that fresh. So they'll do that right then and there. The husband will come and deliver it, and they'll do it right then and there, because if, sometimes a fresh specimen is better. It's as simple as it's logical. If it's, if, if it's going to be put in, in the woman... They do it right then and there. No, 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 but, but, but remember, it, it, there is a period of time where it's in a two, where it's in a cup. Obviously, there, but there's obviously a schmear. The, the reason why no, they, there's had, a shmir. They, had, they had the worry before. But wouldn't you have thought, when you say hotzaz zer levatola, that means a person ejaculated he's not within the vagina. So the tzitz is saying an erchanami. The tzitz is saying that's not the definition. He's saying since it's going to end up exactly where it's supposed to be anyways, it's not hotzaz zer levatola. Biyot v'akol uchnas al tocharecha. So like what Bernie said, if you only installed half of it, so that would be a problem of hotzaz zer levatola. The tzitz says, this is exactly less similar to a man having relations with his wife and they don't get pregnant. So, and, and, and therefore, so if it doesn't work, it, that it's no problem. It's just like when you have relations with your wife and you don't get pregnant. It, you're, you're not over any, any isser. That's a test tube child. Where the zera is put together with the egg, not in the uterus, it's put together in a test tube. Let's say if it wasn't successful, and for example, they don't fertilize. That's mamish hotzazelavatala. So that's the first problem he says. And therefore, there was no normal ejaculation. There was no Fertility process kedarka, meaning lo mitzara ish for lo mitzara isha. The shnei and Israelim are yedet sad shlishi al toch mafchina. Both of them, the whole process is to, is is happening through sort of a third party, which is the test tube, as well as the the incubator, which has to keep it alive for forty eight to seventy two hours. The gam bitzu afriyam eviyale dehe rayon veleidash al yedet zemekayim my mitzvah nasa gam kein shelo kedarko. The whole process of implanting is also not the normal derech. The koach shlishi he amavchina, and the third koach is this incubator. He goremet lezevi imkain b'chol kagon da. Any example like this? Yeshap your mokam nirchav loymar shekulam yoydu shaloy makaimim klal ayedekein mitzvah priyav rivia. Says the tzitz. Ki mitzvah lena b'torat yerak dusha laor kol laomer dvarenu ad kol nira laniu daiti alach dein lahatir b'shem parim es afriyam lachutit kamavchina. So at the time that the tzitz wrote this, he was against. Performing in vitro fertilization. Yeah. Rav Ovadia Yosef allowed IVF when the couple could not become pregnant otherwise, on condition that there's proper supervision to ensure that the correct embryo is returned to the woman. Maskona de Dina, 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 So, contrary to the Tzitz, he's learning, he sees no difference between artificial insemination. It's ending up in the same place. And just like by IUI, it ends up in the same place, this ends up in the same place. And he, he sees no halachic nafkamina. He says, on the condition that there is no other absolute way that the, the woman could get pregnant any other way. You have to do shmirish lo yuchlaf zera bab Like we said, they, they, were, they used to switch. A, a OBGYN got sued from Irvine. It was a famous case in the 1980s when I was training in residency. 
Donald Meldrum. You can look it up. M E L D R U M. Well known. Forty years ago. About the woman born to a religious. No, that's where they were using other men. They, they, yeah, the whole issue of where the, where the Satmar and the Hasidim were all concerned that there would be mix up, these were real cases like that. Uh, yes. Just like we have halachas today, we have halachas that basically, like, um, like we did with the baker, right? They're very concerned with their own reputation. Yes. Right? So, I don't know what he wrote, he wrote, wrote, wrote this, this yeah. uh, chuba, but today, to do a returning to DNA test is so easy. You don't have to go over the counter. Go right? ahead. I wonder if... It, it, it absolutely it affected their, their psaac. Once Shmira came in, all the post came and said it's not a problem. I know, but the question is, do you even need Shmira today, considering that it's so easy to identify... First of all, it's, first of all, it's not that easy. It's, by the way, paternity testing with DNA, didn't we... First of all, it's we, it's complicated. It's expensive. It, it it's it's not absolute. Where did we have over the counter now? It's where not did we, expensive. Where did we? Paternity. Did we have an okay, absorber? I just, saw, I just saw an over the counter paternity test in the, in, at CVS. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, they're cheap. They're not expensive. I know, but it, 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 first of all, so anyways, the reputational issue. A percentage chance. I think the uh, reputational issue is a very important thing. What Chaim says, 99, for example, 99. by by kashrus. Right by kfela, right? You have dinim, right? The svar, you know, the the, the svardim. For example, bittul is b'shishim. So we Ashkenazim that follow the Ramah that says always has to be shishim. But but according to the Shulchan Aruch, they would get a goyish chef and he would taste it. And even if it was let's say one in forty, but they couldn't taste it, it would be kosher according to the svardim. This is like the machaber in the Ramah regarding that issue. And there they go into that, that, that sh- I, what about goyim will lie? Like, mesiach lefitumo. So, for, number one, they have to say it. You, 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 they can't be know that you're asking them specifically for a lachic question, because they might lie just to just to, to ruin the problem. So it has to be mesiach lefitumo. And they say that today, since reputationally, they don't want to be, they, they, there's a reputational issue. And if they're lying, it's not will hurt their reputation, we can believe them. And then certainly in medicine today, that is, you know, because they can be sued, et cetera, et cetera, you can rely a little bit more on, profe- on professionalism. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 so that'll play a role. Now, the you issue of the, what, you want to reject Shmira altogether because you, you can do paternity testing, that I haven't, I haven't seen anyone go, go that far. They, remember, it was hard to get the post scheme to accept this procedure. When, when Shmira came in, they all of a sudden accepted it. You know, we, we, we don't want to go backwards. Okay. So, for easily Misha Kosov Lechalik Lesser Benir Nidon, who is he talking about? The Tzitz. He saw, he saw somebody who wanted to asser by IVF. He, he can't find a Svara, says Ravavadya. And then later on, you know, the Ravosner, you know, other Gidolim eventually, or Sternbuch, eventually they agreed to the, that IVF is permitted. And the Sefer Pua says, Rov Ruvan Shal Poske Dorenu. Sefer Pua is, is a, a contemporary Sefer. Matiri Mafriya Chutz Kufi Benish Lishto. Bitnai She'en Lezugev Sherud Acher Libanot. These are the conditions. They have no other way of having children. Tznai no Safu Shiesh Pikuach El Chati. There's Shmira. Vakpadim Leash Loi Tarev Zera Balim Zera Acher. That they shouldn't mix another man's Sheikh Lazera. By the way, that Hakpada is mainly to deal with the of Teitelbaum, the Satva Rebbe's objection that he held there was Mamzerus with another Baal. Uh, if you used Sheikh Fazera of someone who was not the husband. According to Rav Moshe, there's no Mamzerus. There's only Mamzerus if the act of Bia was done with another man. But because you used another man's Sheikh Fazera, it would not create Mamzerus. Now, Rav Moshe also would not, uh, w- w- certainly approves of using the Baal, but there wasn't the same. Uh, Opposition to it because of the chashash of mamzeres, because Rav Moshe held there was no mamzeres. The only way you got it is it's Absolutely. So that, that's a problem. If you if you know you're not going to use the husband's sperm, you absolutely would have a problem with sheikh lazer Now the shelo yuzur betaus kedem ovrim shul zugechad leisha cheres. They're not going to use a different embryo. Ekev hargishut alachtit fanatit posezeh ha'etit. 
יתהלך כולו נעשה בעקבלות וויכוח כדי למנוע הידידות מוספים בתחום כה רגיש, זה so emotional, חיוני בעל השלכות הדתיים החשובות ביותר. So, I think we had, now, I would encourage everyone on your own time to read the article on PGD. That's post-gestational diagnosis. What is this? So, we now understand that we have the ability to create the children of a couple outside. That means normally when you have normal relations, you don't know the genetics of what's going on inside. But now if you take the sperm of the husband and the egg of the female and you create an embryo. So for example, in Tay-Sachs disease. So when I was at UCLA as an undergrad, they, at Harbor UCLA developed the blood test to detect carriers of the Tay-Sex gene. And I and a few others were recruited, maybe 10 other Jewish kids, and we went to all the lecture halls at UCLA, they gave us permission, because at the time I went to UCLA, there were 27,000 students and 9,000 were Jewish. So the concept was, everyone should get a blood test, and you wouldn't be told what's going on, but you would, it would be put in a bank, mm -hmm. And then, when you, got, when you want to get married, if you're engaged, you'd send your name in, and they had it recorded somewhere, and they would say, because what happens is, with Tay-Sachs, is a recessive gene. So, A, big A, little a, and if your wife was big A, little a, there was a one-fourth chance that your child could be little a, little a. And if you were big A, little a, or big A, big A, you wouldn't have the disease. You'd only get the disease the if there were, it was a recessive gene. So there was a 25% chance that the child could have a Tay-Sex gene. Tay-Sex disease, where you die at the age of one or two, it's a terrible neurological disease, etc. So thousands of UCLA kids, not they were from, everyone went to get the test because it helped them. So the concept was you would not marry that person if you were both carriers because every time you'd want to have a kid, 25% chance you would have a Tay-Sex disease. Let's say a couple got married before this test, or they never had this test. And now they come to you, and, they, and you, you find out that they, have, they, are taste, they are both Tay-Sachs carriers. With the new technology, you could do in vitro fertilization and check the embryo, so whether it's got, it got, it's got the little b, little b, or it's got an a, big, a, a, little b. You can check, you can do, let's say you're now at the 32 or 64 cell stage. So you can remove one of the cells, doesn't damage the embryo. You can check its DNA and you can see the chromosome and can they know whether it's little a, little a, or big A, big A. If it's big A, little a, you can implant the embryo. It's a way to cure Tay-Sachs. And they can get married, but with pre-genetic diagnosis, you can identify the, and reject that embryo and only implant an embryo that's going to be a healthy child. Yeah, you right, got no, so so there's halachic can can you go is, that a, is are you allowed to do so yes but Rav St I don't know who was here in my home if you remember Professor Steinberg was in my home a year ago and gave a lecture that for example if you have a child if you have a couple who's had four girls and they want to have a boy in the kind of so the state of Israel a lot funds it and 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 the rabbanut has allowed. This PGD, what they would do is they would do in vitro fertilization. They would reject it if it's a girl, and if it's a, bo a boy embryo, they would implant it. So read this article on PGD and whether Allah accepts or doesn't accept it. It's, it's fascinating. How about if there were four boys and no girls? Could you do it? Say it again. Was it halachically permitted the other way around? Yes, it is because you're not makayim pruvim. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just want to make sure. What about, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what about the cases now lately? You have a single woman who. Don't, are afraid that their their time is gone, going, and they impregnate themselves to have a child. But that's more problematic because who's the well, yeah, and so who's that, the father? And there's no yichus, and that's a, that's, but that's probably a logically it's not. Time. They wouldn't authorize that logically, or yes? No, they would stop. That that that's no, that's no. That's no. That's no. That's no. well, this is a single girl. So how is she gonna? Is someone gonna sleep with her? No, she gets from a bank, I assume. She gets from a bank. Well, yeah. so 
So halacha also doesn't is not, isn't happy with the sperm bank. No, the, the problem is chashda. That's that's. But they normally they want a goyish sperm. Chashda right? yeah. that yeah. Uh, all of a sudden she's pregnant and everybody will be suspicious oh, why she's pregnant. Marisa. He normally wants you to have literally Marisa. a sperm from a goy. Because yes, because you want problem, you want yeah. to have a problem with erva, with prohibited relations. Otherwise, you'll marry your so sister. Really, so yeah. That's enough. Thank you. So some of these women, even religious women that have kids, the only way they could have gotten that through a sperm bank. That was it. If they're single. Right? If she was single. Yeah. There's other ways to have a child except through a sperm bank. I mean, you what can have there relations with someone, I guess. I'm going to tell you the story. No, of the no, but it was relations with someone. <laughs> hmm? You know no. the story of the birds and the bees? Okay. No, no, no but it wasn't, <laughs> I mean, it wasn't because of the birds and bees. Here he's talking about winnowing and, and threshing on birds and bees. Let's, we're going to now move on to there are three chapters of Hilchos Avelus. Now, Unfortunately, many of us have learned Hilchos Avelus Bishas Maisa, right? If, if someone has had uh, a loss and have be, has been an Avel, so many times they've learned these halachos, they may, we may have forgotten them, we may not have, have learned them properly in the first place. So, um, your day has a, a large section on Hilchos Avelus. So, uh, you know, the old way of Rabbonim getting smicha were that they were trained in three Simonim Shulchan in Taruvis, in Basar V'cholov, and Hilchos Malicha. And, and those are the tests you had to pass. So today, in the more modern, like for example, at Yeshiva University, their Smicha program, you, ha, you are tested on Hilchos Avelis. Uh, that's part of it. You, like Malicha, they, they've removed, they don't necessarily go through Malicha anymore. They don't think it's as relevant. But that uh, uh, certainly, or somebody who's going to be a pulpit rabbi needs to know the dinam of Avelis very well. Mm -hmm. So it, this Hilchas Avelis has been expanded significantly mm. in the curriculum of Rabbonus today because of its practical use. You know, um, so the halachic system is an elaborate one that is intended to guide us through all different aspects of life. The same system has also developed a series of halachot to guide us when, God forbid, someone suffers the loss of a close relative. So when a person loses one of their seven close relatives, father, mother, spouse, sister, brother, daughter, or son, the halachos of Avelis are designed to help the person express their feelings of mourning and sorrow at this time and grapple with the loss. So over the next three shiurim, we will survey many of these halachos, beginning in this year with the rules that have effect immediately following the death of a relative and the burial, and continuing the next two shiurim with the rules that apply during the first week following the burial, known as shiva. The first stage of mourning is known in halacha as aninut, which in Hebrew means grief or sorrow. For example, when Yaakov named Binyamin Ben Oni, <coughs> uh, that has some, and then it also says, when we when we do the vidui meiser lo achalti veoni, I didn't eat any of the children's meisers during that period of time. So that's two places in Tanakh where the word appears. The rules of the stage takes effect from the time that one hears of the death of one's relative until the deceased is buried. So that's the period of Aninus. We're going to see soon halachic tricks that are done. That means, let's say you come to inform someone, but they haven't been told, they don't know yet. So sometimes th things will be done to that person before they tell him. Because once the Aninus occurs, he might be restricted in doing certain things. So it's very important that we said, it's when one hears of the death of one's relative that you begin the process of Aninus. This time is usually when the relative experiences the most severe feelings of shock and profound loss, and consequently the halachic expression of mourning during this time is also quite extreme. As is described by the Mishnah born Brachas, we just finished in the Daf Yomi, that the mourner is exempt from fulfilling all positive mitzvahs. You notice that he's not exempt from lavim. All negative commandments he's still is still machayev to do. But all positive mitzvahs he is exempt. I'm confused. Let's go back. If he had a brother that passed away and they didn't tell him anything until after they were sitting shiva, the family was sitting shiva. After, after the shiva, they come back and they tell him. Is Let's do it. We're going to do this is, is state. No, 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 no. Aninus is from the first time you hear <laughs> of, that he died <laughs> until he gets <laughs> buried. Until buried. No, buried okay. only. That's okay. it. What you're talking about, Shmua Krov and Shmua Rechoka, what happens when you hear about the death after he's been buried? We're going to deal with all of that. We're, right now we're in the period of aninus only. 
from when the person died, you mm-hmm. hear about and it, hear. and he gets buried. Then what is your, you're an owning, and you're exempt, and you don't eat meat, and you don't drink wine. Mishnah. Says the Mishnah. Says the Gemara. When the mace is in front of you, yes. But But you're not a, a potter from all these things when the mace is not in front of you. So the Gemara says, no, Verminu. It says, Ve'en ochel bosser. He doesn't eat meat. Ve'en ochel bosser. Ve'en ochel bosser. Ve'en ochel bosser. He can't. He cannot bench. He cannot be part of the zimun. Name of varchen alav. You can't bench for him. Vayim zan in alav who potter me kriyash ma. We're not filling. We're not filling. We call mitzvah so much potayra. So so so, and that seems to whether the mace is there or not. So Ravashi is mitarts. Kiven shemut to alav lekoiv roy kemut to lefon of dami. That means as long as the mace has not been buried, it's as treated as if the mace is right in front of you. Mm-hmm. So all the dinim. Of the mace being right in front of you is 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 operative until he's buried. Which means that if you can't bury him, then you then you would you you eat the meat. How long would you be an oine? So for example, you know, let's say an oine is three days. It's three an days. An oine, right? An oine on Shabbos. How long? Hang on, hang on, hang on. We're gonna we're gonna get to Shabbos. But somebody dies in war, their body is not recovered. The six million, none of them, none of them were buried. So if people did not stay in the news forever. Once we know that they died, that, that that's enough, and there was no burial. So, so the, so, so. Okay. Got, okay. Steve was two years older than me. Sixty-five. Yeah, he's in Marlene's class. He was yeah. in the Malad Marjaner with us. Shenemar vayakom Avraham apnei meso, v'nemar v'egbra meisi mufanai. Kozman shemuta lo v'kover kumuta lufan of dami. So that's this is how we extended the aninos to the time of burial. Although an onin does not recite any brachos during this time, he is still certainly permitted to eat. So you might think, right? Because if you eat without making a bracha, it's ki'ilu goizle ma'kodesh baruch hu. Right? You're considered a thief if you eat without making a bracha because it all belongs to Hashem. So maybe, since you're not allowed to make a bracha, maybe you're not allowed to eat. No. You're not permitted to make these brachas. By the way, he emphasizes you're not permitted, i.e. we're going to go into, oh, well, what if he wants to do brachas? Is he allowed to? And we're going to go through that. It's going to come out from the poskim that you're not permitted to do it. You cannot take on the chumrah, oh, I'm going to be more, more tzaddik and I'm going to make the bracha. You're not permitted to make the bracha. But you're allowed to eat and drink what you want. You don't say any of the brachas of the davening. You don't say kriyashma. No, no, we didn't say that yet. And you're not mispalel. You don't wear your tzitzis. You don't put on your tzitzis. That's the dinim of Aninus. We'll see what Shabbos. Hang on, let's hold on to Shabbos. The first day of Shiva that you don't put tefillin. So let's see. This is what we're we're going to going through all these halachas from beginning to end, step by step. So although the Mishnah more clearly state that one is exempt from reciting brachos and performing positive mitzvahs. It's not obvious whether one may fulfill mitzvahs or recite brachos should he choose. The Yerushami holds that one may not recite brachos or perform mitzvahs and suggests two possible reasons for this prohibition. Why, 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 why do we have this prohibition? Amar Rav Bun, Ksiv, Laman tis kors yom seis chameretz mitzrayim kol yemei chayecha. So you should recall the going out of Egypt every day of your life. When? Yomim shat oisik ben b'chayim. Velo yomim shat oisik ben b'mesim. On days that you are going to be oisik with dead people, you're not required to be, to recite the mantiskor. Tani. Imrotz l'achmer l'atzmo. 
He wants to be machmir, and he wants to say kriyashmar. He wants to say brachos. Ein shomin lo. Lama. Why don't we listen to him? Two reasons. It's an honor to the mace that you're, you see it is shaking him up so much that it's a cover for the mace. Oh, now, if the burden is on you to bury him, so you, you should not be occupied doing other things. And being occupied doing all these other things, making brachos and things like that, is going to interfere in, your, in the burden for you that you have to participate in his burial. So, manafik binayu. Now, what, excuse me, manafik binayam. What's the nafkamina between these two reasons? Why give me two reasons? Because, hailo mishiyisa masuo, ve ain tamer, ve kvoda shomei, sosser. That means, let's say you have somebody who can occupy with the burial. So, that, but, 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 so if that was the only reason, maybe you'd have to make these brachos. So, because of kvoda shomei, it still remains osser. Ve im tamer me, 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 she, elom. If, if you had somebody to help. So according to Yushalmi, the basis for the exemption is a pasuk referring to the mitzvah of remembering the exodus from Egypt, which indicates that one need not perform the mitzvah when engaged in preparations for death rather than issues of life. Yushalmi then very, states... Very strange because it's, uh, it's not Kriyashma. It's the last part of Kriyashma. It's Birch, he said, Birchos Kriyashma. Psukit is Zimra, Birchos Kriyashma, no, and Vena Kori Kriyashma. The that brings, oh, the Mantis Kors Yom Seisha. Yeah, but remember, Kriyashma is the, is the, the last part. Right. Emes Fiyotziv. I have another question. Well, that, I think that's what his example is of doing mitzvahs. So he used that posuk to say that on days that you're occupied in doing, uh, do, occupying with death, you don't have a chiyu for that. And then he extended it to other things. So they extended it to all mitzvahs based on that. No, the Nazis asking good. Well, they really extended it. Can I just ask you something yes. else? It's, it's, the parish says, so, uh, That would be everybody who's involved in Chebra Kadisha. Hang right? on. At the Bernie, funeral parlor. Bernie, and the operator. Ber- very good. Ber- hang on. The base so, so you're asking very good. Where does, what, what is, let, let's see where the Chebra Kadisha fits in. We're going to have that tonight. The Yerushalmi states, that the reason for the fact that it's forbidden to either is either to ensure that the relatives are available to assist with the burial or as a tribute of honor to the deceased to show the extent of the significance of the loss and explains that the nafkamina would be in the case where others are available to plan for the funeral and burial. So even if there are others available because of COVID-19, you would still be usher to make these brachas. Now, the base Yosef, right, the commentary on the tour, cites a machlokas rishoni between Rashi and Tosfas, concerning whether one is permitted to be machmir on oneself to recite brachos. Kosov od arosh, rashi piresh, eno mavarech, means eno tzarech shivarech, mashma, she'im rotzel levarech harshus biyodo. So Rashi seems to be learning that an onin would have the rishus if he wanted to, to make the brachos. But v'lo mashma kein bishmaitzen, but in our sugi we don't agree. V'chein dasa toisves, v'arav rabbeinu yone, do osu levarech, that it's not that you have a rishus, it's prohibited. It seems like the Rambam holds like Rashi that you might be permitted to make the brachos. However, the Rosh rules, not like Rashi, not like the Rambam, but like the Tosfus and Yerushalmi, that an Onin is forbidden from reciting brachos and performing mitzvahs. He also rules that even if there are other people that can help with the burial preparations, one may still not perform mitzvot or recite a bracha based on mm-hmm. that statement why, in why the Yerushalmi. Why the bracha is, uh, is an exception? <coughs> say it again? According to Rashi and the Rambam, you don't allow to say Kriyashma and you're allowed to say brachas, or you're allowed to say Kriyashma too? Yeah. You know, you're not allowed Neither. to say any of them. So only brachas you're allowed to say. You know, uh, one uh, I would say they were machmir, mm-hmm. that they wanted to do any of these things. But let's say brachas, let's say before eating. I think people were concerned about being goizel HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So let's say not creation, but certainly brachas. So limited. Because well, it could be. Could be. I, I, it could be. Uh, I, we have to learn the Rashi inside to see that they extend it only to brachas or to, to all these things. Once wants to be machmer himself. Yeah, I understand I'm potter from Kriyashma, but I want to be machmer Kriyashma. So it seems like the Rashi and Rama are certainly allowed by brachas, yes. Says the Rosh, Yesh Omrim, if 
So the Rosh is also saying that, that there were people who said that if there are other people involved in the maze, I want to make the brachas. But uv yishami lo mashma hachi. The gar says him, Eino oichel kol tzorcho, ve'eino oichel bozo, ve'eino shosigayin, v'lo mavorch, v'en birech, e'in onin amen achram. V'acherim she'barchu e'in onin achram me'amen. Uvanias amen, e'in omiz batel mitzorch ha'mez, v'afilo hachi oser. That means even when there are people around, like the Yerushalmi said, you are still, because of covered amaze, required to follow this prohibition. So the Rosh is saying that even if there are people helping, that was not, the Yerushalmi held no, and the Rosh is going like that. Let me ask you, so the Hebrew Kedisha that we were talking about before, oh, yes. the guy's working every day in the Hebrew Kedisha, so he's potter from davening all the, year, the, whole, the whole week? <coughs> oh, no, that's a different thing that he was asking. You want to say, just people who were, no, but a person who works in the Hebrew Kedisha, it's not his relative. Not he's not an owner, he's, he's a worker. Yeah, now, you have a din about in, if yeah, a mace yeah, is in I'm front of you, right. but if he goes to a different cheder, he's allowed to eat. Is your relative? It's two good. It's two good. Number one is your relative, yes. and number two is that you have to. It's not a covered up mace. No, not a covered up mace. That you basically preparing for, for the for the kfura. You have to prepare for the kfura, therefore, you don't have time. To and all those things because your But we're two the second reason is covered a mace. So that's what I'm saying. Even if you have the people, the Yushami learned that because of the Kvodash mace, you may not do these brachas. You cannot be made. So it's a desecration of the covered mace if all, if you go ahead and do yeah, the brachas. That's in front of him. But what no, no, not in front of him. We learned we learned that's very important. We Ravashi told us that until the bit the mace is buried, it's considered Kemutalafana. Remember, remember the that's the important thing. din. Why it's considered kamut to of your. Well, that's well, why you're known. Only the relative. Though. Only the relative. The I'm talking about the guy. Why, what do you get out of it? The yeah. worker chaver kedisha worker. Oh, you want to say because he's? Yeah, but at three o'clock when he goes home, he's not in front of the maze. What is judged? The vachta is sitting. Yeah. Then the gimel vachta is to 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 for, for 12 hours. He doesn't yes. know to eat. But, you can't eat. But you can't eat because you're within Dalad Amis, so you can see him. That's a different din of being in the presence of the mace. How can you dominate? You cover the mace is in front of you, and you're also you for the mace. You wouldn't. He would not daven. In a chanami, he would not. It was based on the Gemara that the, like, the person that was walking the cemetery was just hanging out. Same. Loig LaRoche. Yeah. We're going to get but there. That, but that, but that, is, that, is that the idea to that, cover the mace? No. They, they said it very nicely. They said... A, tr a tribute of the honor to the deceased to show the extent of the significance of the loss. The fact that you are pottering yourself of all the mitzvahs, it shows what a loss this was. That's the cover to the mace. And by, like, it, when do we ever go through a day where you don't put on film? Don't, you understand? It's an act of mourning that is a cover to the mace. Well, it's not, it's not the, the notion of the mace. <clears throat> no, the no, not yet. No, the Loeg LaRoche is going to come. That's why you, in front of the mace, you can't do certain things. But you're an onen even when you're not in front of the mace. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the Shulchan Aruch rules that one is not allowed to be stringent upon oneself. He's pasking like the Rosh. Remember, we have a rule in general that the Shulchan Aruch followed the Rambam, the Rosh, and the Rif. I don't know how the Rif paskin, but I would assume that perhaps he, the Rif also said that one should not be machmir because he usually went two out of three. Because the Rambam said that you're allowed to be you had the Rishus to make the brachas. The Rosh said no. So whatever, the, Be the Shulchan Aruch, the Marana, Rav, 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 Rav Karo, followed the Rosh. Since it cites that the opinion without any dissenting one, it also rules that Anino supplies even when others are taking care of the needs of the burial in accordance with the Rosh. Mm -hmm. It means, even though, Bernie, you've given the mace up to the Chavar Kedisha, they're doing it. Because of the second reason of the Rushalmi of the covet of the mace, you as the Onain still are, are, are not permitted to do all these things. Right, because there's still some things that you might have to contribute. They might ask you something. By the way, no Jerry, you were, you're right on target. We're going to see that very shortly. The Shulchan Aruch says right away, even though you're not required, you're not, you're not needed for the Tzorch HaMes, you're a potter. You're not permitted. Now, in the event that the relatives are not able to deal with the burial preparations at all, for example, they do not live nearby, or the body has been handed over the Chavar Kedisha, it seems that in principle the laws of Aninot 
are no longer in effect as recorded by the Yerushalmi. Says the, because there's another Yerushalmi, it says like this, Nimser Larabim, that means it's given, given over to the public organization that deals with Kvura, Oichel Basar Vishosiyayim. Seems like he's not known it anymore. Nimsar Liktefayim. Liktefayim is like pallbearers. People who are going to carry the mace on their shoulders. It's Kamisha Nimsar Larabim. So, and this ruling is accepted by the Shulchan Aruch. Malkam Shanogim Katafim. Miyuchadim Lotsiyah Mace. There were special people that, I guess, would take the mace out of the house. Ulaachash Nisasko Akron Metzor Chakvu Yimsar Lahem Vehem Yikvaru. And they would bury him. Mishemasru lahem, once they, it was given over to them, mutar makrovim bebos v'yayi. Afilu koidim shod siyu me'abayis. That means they come into the house, and now they're responsible. Even before they've removed the mace from the house, they already now can eat meat and wine. Shashuv e'na mutal alem. It's considered, hey, on, hey, on, hey, on, is going to develop here. However, the Pisgah Tshuva states, that this applies only if the relatives will not be participating in the funeral. Mm. So, for example, yeah, let's say the mace is actually going to be removed and you're not going to go with it. So, in a chanami, at that point, your aninas will be over. But if the murners do plan to participate, then the laws of aninas continue until the completion of the death. <coughs> it's important aloha, particularly today. So, you know, when, when you, when you, when the, when you send the, car, the, the body to Israel, as soon as the body goes to the corner. So let's see. Let's see. This rule applies. Even time. Let's. We're gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna learn it. Everything in detail as much as we can. Says the Pischei Tshuva. Mutar makrovim bebos Right. The Pischei Tshuva is commenting on the line in the Shulchan Aruch where he said that once they gave it over to the people, they can now eat meat and drink. The Noi de Behuda, right? The Noi de Behuda lived in Prague in the year 1780, 1790. Okay? He's one of the first, what we would call, modern Achronim. I would include him in the Chsam Soifer, uh, the Kiveger. Uh, uh, these are the, the giants of the early, uh, uh, I would call them the, the, the early Achronim. You know, Rav Moshe is, is an Achron in our generation, but you're talking about 1780s, and the Chassam Soifer was 1810. So, the Noi de Yehuda, He said, certainly they're Chayav in Mitzvahs. Giving it over just to the pallbearers will also work. Like when they're going to take him to a far place. And if the oin is not going with them, period. But when the relatives are going to go, so even though you've given over to the Chavr Kadisha, giving over to the Chavr Kadisha is not helping. Says the Pesachet Tshuva, in our minig, they're still potter and tefillah. The only time they daven is once the tefillah, the kavur is done, and then then they daven. You know, if it's not, the zman hasn't passed yet. After kavur nishpashu ma chaver kadisha, bad malcolm kavur. They've already they've already made the deal with chaver kadisha. They know where it's going. They made all the deals there. The nosel lemotzas for tachrichim. They've given everything. The tachrichim and the otzas, and they paid kiven dim komenu gam akrovim holchim zras kavura. They remain connected, and the gesher achayim yechil machel tuchatchinsky states as well. That the custom today is to continue the period of Aninus until the burial, if the relatives participate in the funeral. Look at the bond. The rule applies even according to those that hold that the restrictions remain enforced when others are engaged in funeral preparations. In that case, the relatives may still need to be involved in the planning somewhat while here. The ones dealing with the remainder of the preparations, such as the tahara of the body, are experts who take care of everything without any of being contact with the relatives. So, says the Gesher Chaim, Bizman Shagamru Ha'oinanim, the cider called Inyone Hames. The family who were oinanim, they finished all their things with the chaver kedisha. Mitzad adin paskaninus miyachinim sarmeis of neach chaver kedisha l'sasik b'taraso. Remember the shulchan aruch, the, the, the Yerushalmi said very clearly: once you gave it over to the rabbim, your aninus is over. So that's why he says meikar adin. Technically, your aninus is over. After meis adin b'bayis, and they, that held even if the meis was still in your house, you already you signed the chaver kedisha to go come pick it up. 
you're not involved anymore. But Kigam Tamarisha Nikovit Amaze, Gamu Yashu Rak Bizman Shiesh Od Sarchit Askuso, Veloshk for Sidr Kolin Yonov. So for the honor of the maze, you still should do it. Ulam Achresha Nogim Harbe Avelim Livos Amaze Bekuraso. Most of the family is going to go to the cemetery. Now, again, it seems like there were pe- people who didn't. But since Harbe do go, Umehem Ishtadvim Benesia Samito, of course, they also carry the coffin. Afshe Ein Chorch Behem. Now, there may not have been a need for them because there's already people hired to do it. The aninus does not end until the kever is closed. Well, we know the seven primary relatives. The seven primary relatives. Now, we're going to see. Now they have, once there's stima sakever, now you have a din of an ovel about shaving, showering, laundered clothes, that doesn't hold by Aninos. Now we're going to deal with, well, does that hold in the period of Aninos or does not not hold in the period of Aninos? And there's going to be a debate about that. Did you follow? That means the dinim of Avelos, where you don't shower, you don't shave, and you take off your clothes. Was that supposed to be knowing during the Aninos period or not? So we're going to see Meikra Din? No. But we're going to see, so we'll see that debate. Let's just finish. So listen, gentlemen. If people are on the way to the funeral, but there are people staying in the house and not going to the funeral, once the mace is taken out of the bias, they are no longer Aninus. So there are parts of the family that will break the Aninus at different times. Those that are going will be in Oinen until the Stima Sakeber. Those that remained in the house and did not go, Kishamotzim Samesim Abayas. And then there's going to be an interesting thing. Even for them, these dinim of avelus, which means showering, shaving, shoes, and all that, will not start until they hear signal, the somebody calls them, and they say, oh, the mace is buried. The okay? Did we get? Avelus is complicated. So let's just look. Aninus we've talked about up until Misa, uh, up until the burial. You expect the Avelus to be so a lower house, madriga than the Aninus in terms of suffering. Very nice, so but, it, but, but, Aninus is, but Aninus is different. We are potter me, me those things, but the din of Avelus does not start until the Kvur is.